Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tau Player Mouse. Now we have shot 3D printed rounds out of a shotgun before. Now a channel called Simple App Inventor 2.0 sent us some 3D printed rounds using bronze uh, fill. Now I'm certainly not going to pretend to know much about 3D printers, but it's my understanding that the bronze filament has uh, metallic particles in with the plastic, and it does make for a much heavier uh, object. Today we're going to be focusing on this teardrop shaped round. The other rounds we're going to shoot later. But because this teardrop is such a odd shape, you'd never be able to get very good support in the shell, so we created this kind of a holder for it, which is also uh, 3D printed. Now the weight of the combined holder and the teardrop round is about half an ounce which is about 16 grams and the weight of the teardrop round itself is 12 grams and because of the coloring of this round I had to put some markings on it I wasn't sure if silver would show up better or black so I'd use both and that's so we can maybe see it better with the high-speed cameras because brown is not going to show up very well against brown sand the round really doesn't lock very tightly into this, I guess you could call it a sabo. And when you shoot it, it's supposed to, you know, separate from that black sabo and the round will fly by itself. But as you saw in my titling, this is a failure analysis, so we're going to try to figure out what went wrong with this round. Another thing we wanted to test was a light blue background. This gives us a solid color, not too bright and not too dark to contrast the rounds against as they fly through the air. And the reason Darren is holding the gun in such a weird way is so his shoulders and arms don't block the camera view. Ready. Huh. Went through it. Yeah, but... Even at 300 frames per second, you could see that the Sabo did not separate from the teardrop. Now the shotgun shell had a reduced powder charge in it because I was worried that the G-Shock would just shatter the whole assembly. I also wanted to keep the velocity low enough so that we could still be able to observe what was going on with this round. Now this is 600 frames per second and we have a little better detail there. And you can see the round tumbling off to the left after it goes through the plywood. I do like the light blue background, how it contrasts the round against it. That seems to be working well. We'll probably use that in other videos. As you know, we learn from our mistakes and we can't improve unless we know what's wrong. And if you have any ideas why this failed, hey, share it with us. Actually, I don't even need to ask because people are pretty free about telling us when we're doing something wrong anyway. and. The solution to everything is either get a better high-speed camera or shoot it out of a rifled barrel. <laughs> and believe me, if I had better high-speed cameras, I would not be wasting my time making YouTube videos with it. I'd be taking it out, contracting it, filming the high-speed production lines or whatever, getting paid a little better. But I wanted to show these last two clips because it really shows you how bad of a background sand is. It really obscures this high-speed dart you can hardly tell what's going on. Anyway, I hope you still enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.